by the end of your book, I actually found myself homesick for the place. <laughs> and, I'm sorry uh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought that probably without realising it, you have actually shown your reader um, a side of yourself that maybe you kept private. It's frightening for a child to be in a time of war, even yes. if they feel safe in their own environment, to actually have to be taken out of your own home environment yeah. and put with a group of people that stubbornly refused to speak the language, that you, the only right. language you knew. Yeah. Um, you must have felt very isolated. I, I did. I resented it. I really did. I had, a, you're exactly right, I had this feeling for, for Wales, but I resented it because it seemed such a, an unhappy place. It seemed to be locked in the past. And I'd come from a town, Newcastle, which was very busy, very lively. And I thought, I, I, I don't want to be in this sort of atmosphere. But as soon as I left it, it was still there lurking in my mind. I think it's um, my mother's Welsh blood in me. I am half Welsh. And for the rest of my life, it, it has fought the Scottish half of me. The only very good thing about it was the school was extremely good. And uh, they, they took a real interest in me. My mother decided I was very good at composition at school. Oh, right. So it was she that pushed you into the Well, uh, she saw this job advertised. Yeah. Yes, there was a copy boy for the local, local newspaper mm. uh, with the possibility of becoming a reporter. Oh. And as I said, Mother said, uh, I'd always been good at composition, <laughs> so I had to go What's that got to do with journalism? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what has writing got to do with journalism? Exactly. I've heard that said before. <laughs>